Hello, in this video we will be touching upon two-dimensional potential flows. Okay, to, to start building the theory on these uh, two-dimensional potential flow, we need to uh, write down what the assumptions that we're making are. And so these assumptions... These assumptions are uh, effectively that we're looking at planar flows. That is to say a two-dimensional flow, which I'll write down in Cartesian coordinates. Um, then we're also looking at an incompressible flow. And lastly, and that's really what's going to give us the, uh, the, the, the fact that the flow is potential, uh, we're looking at an irrotational, irrotational flow. So, um, planar flow, uh, well, it, it really tells us that we can write down the velocity as a component in the x direction that is depending on x and y uh, times e x plus a component in the y direction depending on x and y e y and it also de might also depend on time i'm not in, i'm not involving this into the into this uh, this modeling here then incompressible flow means that well we have incompressibility constraints in other words that the divergence of the velocity has to be equal to zero and irrotational uh, means that uh, the um, curl of the velocity, which we also call the, um, the, uh, the, the curl of the velocity, which we also call the vorticity, uh, is zero. There is no spin of the flow around itself. So these are, these are our hypotheses. These, these are our assumptions. And we're going to see how to uh, use these um, in uh, the modeling of these two-dimensional potential flows. There are two ways to do this, so I'm going to call that Route 1 and Route 2. So Route 1, uh, we're going to impose that the flow is incompressible first. Okay, so if the flow is incompressible, remember uh, we have that divergence of u equals 0. And because of that, we can introduce a stream function. I'm going to call this stream function psi. And its definition is going to be that u uh, is d psi by dy and v is minus d psi by dx. Okay, so that's going to be the definition of, uh, of my stream function. Well, you can notice that because of the definition of the stream function, the velocity via the stream function, you can notice that, uh, well, the divergence of the velocity, the divergence of the velocity, it's du by dx plus dv by dy. And in other words, if I replace this um, by these, uh, these expressions for the, the stream function, I'm getting here that this is d2u, d2 psi sorry, by dx dy for dx plus dv dy, which introduces a minus sign. Um, and that's going to be d2 psi, so by dx here, and then there's a dy here, so dy dx. And well, these are the two the same quantities, therefore, this is automatically zero. So that's the reason why you can introduce um, a stream function uh, for two-dimensional incompressible flow, is that this stream function makes it automatic that the incompressibility condition is satisfied. Okay, so now we have that stream function. Let's impose um, the, uh, the, 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 the fact that the flow is irrotational, the irrita irrotationality of the flow. The flow is irrotational, irrotational. So the flow is irrotational means that the curl of the velocity is zero. And so I can write down uh, that uh, the curl of the velocity is zero. That essentially, if I rewrite this down, so this is a two dimensional flow, so there is no Z component for the velocity. And these quantities do not depend on z, which means that the ex and the ey component of the curl are going to be zero. That's the vector of the equation. 
Um, well, in other words, there's only one component uh, that is non-zero uh, in this vectorial equation, and it's the z component. So I'm going to write down the z component. So it's going to be d by dx of v minus d by dy of u, and this is in the ex direction, the uh, ez direction, and that's equal to zero. In other words, dv by dx minus du by dy equals zero. Just essentially writing that this component is zero. And if I replace this v and this u by the definition uh, of the scream function here, what that gives me is that this is going to be minus d2 psi by dx squared minus u is d psi dy, so d2 psi by dy squared equals zero. And in other words, what I get here is the Laplacian of the stream function equals zero. Okay, so that's my first route. If I want to solve for a flow that is two-dimensional and potential, which means that it, it satisfies these three conditions, well then I just have to solve for the Laplacian of the stream function equals zero. So the stream function is a harmonic function. This is our first route. So route number two We'll start off by saying that the flow is irrotational. Okay, so we're just imposing here that the curl of the velocity is zero. And because we're saying that, we can introduce uh, a velocity potential. So let us introduce the velocity potential. Uh, and that's going to be phi. Um, and well, the definition of this is that the velocity um, vector is the gradient of the, of the potential. Like any sort of potential theory in classical physics, for instance. Well, no, well and, and note that in a similar fashion, uh, that if you want to write down the curl of a gradient, of phi, okay, um, then, um, and our quantities only depend on x and y, there is no z component of the velocity, so d by dz of psi equals zero. The only component that we have is the z component, so we'll have d by dx of d phi dy minus d by dy d phi dx, this is our, it's carried by the z component. Um, and well, that is equal to zero because this is the same quantity that I'm subtracting here. Okay, so, and that explains why, you know, the, 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 the gradient, the, sorry, the, the curl of the gradient of, of, a, uh, of a scalar function is always equal to zero. And therefore that if you have any rotational flow, you can write down the velocity as uh, a gra the gradient of a potential. And by writing down the velocity in this fashion, you're automatically satisfying the irrotationality condition. Okay? Right, so now that we have this, well, we're gonna say that the flow is incompressible. Okay, so the flow is incompressible. So by saying that the flow is incompressible, what I mean is that the divergence of the velocity is zero. So let's write this up. Let's write this up. Divergence of u um, equals zero. Well, that essentially in you know component form means that it's du by dx plus dv by dy that is equal to zero. And I can replace these by the definition, by the, 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 the gradient of the, the velocity potential to end up finding that this is d2 phi by dx2 plus d2 phi by dy2 equals zero. In other words, that I am getting another harmonic function, the velocity gradient, sorry, the velocity potential uh, in a planar incompressible and irrotational flow um, has to satisfy 
a zero Laplacian condition. Okay, so this is the second route. So what we've shown, what we've seen here is that by considering flows that are planar, incompressible, and irrotational, by imposing these three conditions, what we get is that the flow is harmonic in that whichever you want to use, either the stream function or the velocity potential, these quantities are harmonic function. They satisfy Laplacian equals zero. In this video, we've considered planar, irrotational, and incompressible flows, and we've uh, demonstrated in two different ways that these flows are harmonic. They, uh, they obey the harmonic function theory. And uh, we've shown then that uh, we, we can solve for these flow by either solving that the Laplacian of the stream function equals zero, or that the Laplacian of the velocity gradient is zero, the velocity potential is zero. This concludes this video on two-dimensional uh, potential flows.